Number 15. The planetary model of the atom pictures electrons orbiting the atomic nucleus, much as planets orbit the sun. In this model, you can view hydrogen, the simplest atom, as having a single electron in a circular orbit, 1.06 times 10 to the minus 10 meters in diameter. If the average speed of the electron in this orbit is known to be 2.2 times 10 to the sixth meters per second, calculate the number of revolutions per second it takes, it, it makes about the nucleus. Okay. So, all right. So why don't we draw a simple picture? All right, so here's our nucleus. And we have an electron orbiting that particular nucleus. So here out here, I have my electron. So now it says that the diameter, right? Actually, you know what? Let me just move that a little bit over. So it's a little more in the middle. That looks a little better. So now it says that the, the diameter, right, of this circular orbit is 1.06 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. All right, so let's draw that in. So we got a, we got a little, okay, have a nice uh, diameter here. And it said that the diameter, I'm going to say D, is equal to uh, 1.06 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Okay. Now it says if the average speed of the electron in this orbit is 2.2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, so meaning it's moving at a speed, not a velocity, but a speed of 2.20 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, it wants to calculate then the number of revolutions or the number of times per second um, it goes about the nucleus. So we can do this in a couple of ways. Um, let's first find the time it takes to make one revolution. So in order to do that, we're essentially trying to find how long it would take for the electron to make this particular path or travel this distance. Now you might want to ask yourself, what is this distance known as in terms of a circle? Well, that distance is known as the circumference, right? Capital C. So how do we calculate circumferences? Well, we know that the circumference formula is 2 pi r, right? Or pi d. Well, we can use either one, but it'd be a little easier to use pi d. Why? Because they gave us the diameter. So let's do that. So circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. And the diameter was 1.06 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Okay, great. So let's plug that into the calculator. So we get 1.06 times 10 to the minus 10 multiplied by pi. So we'll do three significant figures here. So it works out to be 3.33 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Okay, that's the circumference. In other words, this is the distance, right? I'm just gonna now rewrite it as the distance. So the distance it travels, to make one revolution, that is, is 3.33 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Okay, so if that's the distance, and they told us the speed, right, if we go back, they told us the speed, can we find the time it takes to travel that distance? Sure, right? We need to know a mathematical relationship between the three variables. And the mathematical relationship is that the speed of an object, the average speed, is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time, right? So the average speed they told us is that the electron is moving at 2.20 times 10 to the six. So let's plug that in, 2.20 times 10 to the six meters per second. And that will equal the distance it travels, which I said in one revolution, we just calculated it, was 3.33 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And now I can solve for the time, right? So um, I can go about and solve it right now because I noticed that my meters and the are consistent with the meters on the left hand side, meaning that the meter, the distance value in the uh, speed is in meters and the actual distance is also in meters. Therefore, I can just go about and solve. Just remember your time value will work out to be in terms of seconds because that's the time value in the speed. Okay, so let's just clean it up. Let's get rid of the units. So 2.20 raised. Uh, times 10 to the sixth, 
will equal 3.33 times 10 to the negative 10 divided by t. Solve for t, just switch these two variables. So t is equal to 3.33 times 10 raised to the negative 10 divided by 2.20 times 10 raised to the negative 6. Excuse me, not negative 6, 10 to the 6th. And now just plug that into the calculator. So we get, okay, take that and divide it by 2.2, 2, second e to the sixth. So we get a value of the time it takes would be uh, 1.51, I'm going to round to three sig figs, times 10 to the negative 16 uh, seconds. Okay, so this is the time it takes to make one revolution. Right? So essentially, I can, I can write this value as something that looks like this. So it's 1.51 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds per one revolution. And now what we want to find is we want to find, actually, take a look back at the problem, we want to find, though, revolutions per second. So essentially, I know seconds per revolution, but what I want to do is I want to find the reverse of that, revolutions per second. So all we need to do is simply just flip, flip this fraction. So now I'm going to put one revolution on the top and divide it by 1.51 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds. This will now tell me revolutions per second. So simply just plug that value into your calculator. So 1 divided by 1.51 times 10 to the minus 16 works out to about, and I'm going to round, so this works out to approximately I'm going to write it be uh, below, 6.61 uh, times 10, again, three significant figures, to the 15 revolutions per second. So that's how many revolutions it would make. A whole bunch. Okay, so that takes care of essentially part A. Now for part B, it says, what is the electron's average velocity? So, um... The object is moving, the electron is moving in a circular orbit, right? So we have to know where it starts and where it ends. But let's just assume, because we're talking about revolutions, right? If, we're any, if it makes one revolution, so let's say the electron's starting here, okay? If it starts here and makes one revolution, it would also end in the same spot. So remember what that means in terms of velocity, Okay, I'm going to write the formula on the upper right-hand corner. So average velocity is equal to the average displacement divided by the, not the average displacement, but the change in displacement, but divided by the change in time. So writing out the change in displacement, I can write the final displacement minus the initial displacement divided by the change in time. So what's the displacement value at the end, meaning when it makes one full revolution? Well, I don't know, just call, it, just call it x. And then what's the displacement value when it starts, or where it starts? Well, it's the same thing, right? Because it started and ended at the same point. So I would call that x as well. Well, what's x minus x? Zero. And what's zero divided by t? Zero. So that would be your average velocity. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.